Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Fuel Up with Teen Battle Chef. I am Chef Anastasia, as you all know already. And today I'm super excited because we are making spinach chickpea tacos. So, Jacob, can you share our screen? Of course. Thank you. So, it is Taco Tuesday, right? So, we are kicking Taco Tuesday off with a taco with a twist. So, we are making chickpea spinach tacos and i'm also super excited because joining me today is my teen battle chef ambassador camila hi camila hi everybody i'm camila i'm 15 i go to school the future high and i'm excited to be cooking tacos with you guys today i'm so excited too and i know that we both love tacos but these are tacos with a twist and we will talk about how we made it a little unique but first, let's go over, of course, how we keep it clean and safe in the kitchen. So can we remind everyone how we keep it clean? Okay, so as it says in the board, personal hygiene, wash your hands. There might be some dirt on your hands. You don't want to get that on the food. Tie your hair back. You don't want to get hair in the food either. Roll up your sleeves. You don't want to get your sleeves dirty. And, you know, make sure to keep everything clean, whether it's the utensils you're using or the food you are using and make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself and have fun. That's my favorite one, have fun. Just a reminder, if you haven't done so already, we will go over exactly what we need, but also what's a good way to keep it clean? I think using a garbage bowl, right? So we have a little bowl for our scraps here, but let's go over exactly what we need to make our actual taco. So I'll take you all down to our chef zone to go over our mise en place. So like we said, mise en place means everything in place. So we have everything we need to create our tacos. So chickpeas, spinach tacos, we of course need a can of chickpeas. And I will say this makes a bunch of tacos. So you can use the whole can and make extra. And you can, you'll see, we're gonna make a filling with chickpeas and you can make extra and store it in your fridge. So we're going to use one can. We're going to use one small red onion or about a half of a large onion. I'm gonna use only half of this. We also need our garlic. So we have one clove of garlic, which we will finely mince. I have salt and pepper for some flavor. So salt and a little bit of pepper. I have a lemon because we're going to need a tablespoon of lemon juice. I have some spinach because we said it's a chickpea spinach taco. This is about two big handfuls or you know half of a large bag of spinach. I have cucumbers here for a nice crunchy topping. A little bit of fresh mint or you can use fresh parsley as an herb. And we're gonna make things a little cheesy with some feta cheese. So about a quarter cup to half a cup, depending on how many tacos you're going to make, and a little bit of olive oil for some healthy fats and to keep things nice and flavorful. That's everything we need. And of course, hello, how can I forget what's a taco without our tortillas? So I have some corn tortillas here, and I keep them under a damp cloth when I'm not using them yet. Why do you think we do that, Camila? Does so anyone they, yeah. so they stay fresh once you cook them? Exactly. We don't want them to dry out because if you leave our tortillas out and we're cooking and these are all just exposed, they can dry out pretty easily and get all crackly. And we don't want that. So I'm just going to keep them covered for now. Now, Camila, what are you using that might be a little different from my ingredients in your taco? So I'm going to be adding slices of avocado to the taco. Ooh, what's a taco without avocado? My favorite topping. That sounds so good. Awesome. Alrighty. So now that we know what ingredients we're using, why don't we see if we know why these ingredients are good for us? So let's play my favorite game, Kahoot. So you all can join by either going to www.kahoot.it or using the Kahoot app or scanning this QR code on your screen. 
And our game pin will be 990423. Anyone can join. Let's see if we all know about chickpeas and spinach and all of our other yummy ingredients. Game pin is 990423. Let's battle it out. Let's see who is the smartest when it comes to our tacos. So we have Jacob and Muching. All right, Camila has joined as well. Anybody else? I'll give you guys another 30 seconds to join. All righty, Yuyan. Let's see, anybody else? And you can join during the game. So if there we go, I think we're all here. Okay, so why don't we get started? All right, let's see if everyone knows about chickpea, spinach, tacos in three, two, one. So first question, there's no wrong answer here. Have you ever made an all raw vegetable taco. So have you ever made tacos using raw veggies? We're not cooking anything today. So have we ever made? So no, no one has. So this will be a first. Okay, next question. In which country did the taco originate? Is it Spain, Mexico, America, or Colombia? Hmm, tricky, tricky. So what do we think? Spain, Mexico, America, Colombia. If we can all see the screen, Spain is red. So we all got that one. Good job, it is from Mexico. So Mexicans in, Me in Mexico, obviously, they've been making tacos or some form of a taco before the Spanish even arrived in 1519. So they've been making tacos for 500 years, you guys. We are eating a piece of history today. Although our tacos might not be authentic Mexican tacos, the concept of a taco is 500 years old. Chickpeas have another name. Do you know what it is? Is it soybeans? Rooster poos? <laughs> That's a good one. Garbanzo beans? Or black eyed peas named after the band? All right, thank God we all got that one. Oh, most of us got that one. Somebody said black eyed peas, but it is garbanzo beans. So chickpeas also are known as garbanzo beans. All right, garbanzo beans are delicious and packed with fiber. What does fiber do for us? It doesn't keep you full, you need to eat more. It feeds the bacteria in your gut, improving the immune system. It hurts bowel regularity or it raises cholesterol. That's right, you guys. So fiber, our lovely fiber, feeds the bacteria, the good bacteria in our gut, which improves our immune system. Did we know that 70% of our immune system lies in our gut? So keeping our gut healthy is super important for your immune system. So fiber helps us do that. True or false? The iron in chickpeas helps improve your energy levels and helps your blood cells. Does iron do those things? Improve your energy levels and help your blood cells. That is so true. We need iron for energy and for healthy blood cells because blood carries oxygen to our different body parts, to our tissues, and that's what helps us feel energized. So when we don't have enough oxygen throughout our body, we might feel sluggish and we have low energy. So we need iron to make sure our cells can provide, our blood cells can provide oxygen throughout our body. Spinach is an excellent source of all these nutrients, except is it vitamin K, folate in the blue, yellow is vitamin A, or vitamin B3 in green. This is tricky too. So let's see if we know about the nutrients in spinach. What do we think? 
Oh, this was a tricky one. So yes, spinach has vitamin K and folate and vitamin A. It doesn't have so much vitamin B3. So that was a little toss up. But it is super rich in those other three vitamins and minerals. Okay, true or false. Again, vitamin K is as important to bone health as vitamin D and calcium are. True or false? So do we need vitamin K for healthy bones? True or false? So true, you guys. Good one. So a lot of people think only calcium and vitamin D are needed for strong bones. But vitamin K also plays a, plays a role in keeping our bones strong, hard, and healthy. Science. <laughs> All right, folate, a nutrient found in high amounts in spinach, is important for nursing mothers and their babies. True or false? We all got that one right away. We know that pregnant ladies or nursing mothers need folate in their diet to keep their babies nice and healthy and keep their nervous system and their spinal cord strong and healthy. Feta cheese is fermented, making it A, is it prebiotic, antibiotic, postbiotic, or probiotic? When we think of fermented dairy products like yogurt, we think of probiotic, that's right. Although that was tricky, see someone said prebiotic. So prebiotics, when we think of prebiotic, think of fiber. So fiber is a form of prebiotic. When we think of fermented dairy, so cheese and yogurt, think probiotic. That's the actual healthy bacteria. True or false? The B vitamins found in feta cheese help our bodies convert our food to energy. B vitamins. Do we know anything about B vitamins? What does it do? Is it true or false that it helps our bodies convert food to energy? It is true. There are a ton of, I can't name them all right now. Um, folate is actually one of them, but B vitamins are really useful for converting food that we eat into energy. So that's why we need B vitamins. All right, let's see who won. So third place is Yuyan. Good job. Second place, we have Niu Ching. And first is, drum roll please, Jacob, which is unfair because <laughs> you knew the answers. So I feel like Niu Ching really won. <laughs> but I hope you all learned something if we didn't already. I know a lot of us maybe knew that information, but thank you for playing and thank you. I hope you hopefully learned something new. I know I'm always learning something new when I cook and when I read about nutrition. So I hope you guys do as well. But enough with the talking. I'm hungry. What do you say, Camila? Are you ready? Let's start. All right, let's start. So let's go down to our chef zone. We wanted to start by preparing our mise en place. So do we remember what that means? What does mise en place mean? Have all your ingredients set out. Exactly. So we do have all of our ingredients set out, right? But we need to get them ready to be combined with our chickpeas. So I'm going to start by dicing our red onion. So what I will do, we need to get this tough, papery skin off of our onion. I'm just going to cut it in half. And that, like I said, we are going to use only about a quarter to a half of this onion because we need one small onion, or if you can only find a large one, you can use less. So with an onion, you'll see there's two tips. There's the hairy root, right? And then there's the top that came out of the dirt. We want to chop the top off, but in order to keep the onion held together, we want to keep that hairy root on because that is going to hold our layers of our onion in place. So I'm going to cut off the top, throw that in my garbage bowl, and that way also the skin comes out, comes off way easier. You see, it just comes right off. All right. So Camila, why don't you remind us how we dice, slice and dice our onion? So you have to start from where 
um, this little bud right here is. And you're not going to cut all the way through to like here. Mm -hmm. You're going to stop a little, maybe like up to maybe like two centimeters to where that is. And then just cut down. Good. Yeah, so I'm just like Camila said, cutting not all the way through to the to the the root, but I'm cutting splits. You'll see about a half an inch apart, so we can get a nice smaller dice when we chop into this onion. So I made a few slits across the onion, and now we rotate it. And if you want, you don't have to do this step. I carefully place my hand on top of the onion and just make one slit in the center. You don't have to. And now we start dicing. Remember your bear claw. Look at Camila, how she's keeping her fingertips safe with her bear claw. And see, I'm not gonna use this whole piece of onion. I'm gonna put that on the side because we have more than enough here. And we want to mince our onions. So you can pile it up in a little pile in the center of your cutting board and just pass your knife over it a few times to get a mince. And you'll see, you'll have tiny little pieces of onion. So easy like that. So this is called mincing. What else do we mince usually? What other types of ingredients? Garlic, which we will do next. So we are mincing three things today. We're mincing our onion, our garlic, and our herbs. So we're gonna get a lot of practice mincing. All right. I can put that to the side or I can put it actually directly into my mixing bowl. So I have a mixing bowl here and I'm gonna put my minced onion directly in there carefully. And then we can do the same with our clove of garlic. I love garlic. How about you, Camila? Me too. Oh, the Greek in me, we're born loving garlic. So, which brings up a good point actually. So, you know, we said we're making what? Chickpeas, spinach tacos, we're putting feta cheese in there, some mint, which sounds so not authentic to a Mexican taco, right? But it's called a fusion. So that's what we call fusion. Does anyone know, or Camila, do you know what the word fusion means when it comes to cooking? Well, fusion is usually like if, uh, dishes from one culture, it can be mixed with a dish from another culture to make one big exactly. dish. Exactly. No, that was perfectly said. So we're taking the concept of a Mexican taco, right? And we're putting Mediterranean flavors in there. So think mint and feta and spinach. Those are all Mediterranean flavors that you might see in Greek cooking and Middle Eastern cooking. But we're putting it in a Mexican taco. So that's called fusion. So we have our garlic clove, one garlic clove, and we're going to mince this finely. So watching Camila carefully, you want to lay it flat on your cutting board. With your bear claw, you want to keep your fingers tucked in and make a few slices. Okay. And now you can do the same motion, that rocking motion of mincing. So rock back and forth over your garlic until you get a fine little mince. I've seen a lot of fusion tacos out there actually. I've had jerk chicken tacos, which is a fusion of of course, Mexican taco and Caribbean jerk chicken. I feel like anything could really go in a taco. What do you think? 
I think that can work too as, I mean, as long as it's up to your preference. So what is your favorite kind of taco? Um, I mean, personally, I prefer meat. Mm -hmm. um, I like the ones that are called al pastor because they have pineapple. Yes, that's a popular one. See, that's more authentic. But guys, today we will show you that although most tacos might have meat in them, you can create a filling, satisfying taco with beans. So chickpeas, right? Because chickpeas, just like meat, have a lot of protein. Did you know that? Yeah. So yeah, you're still going to get that filling, satisfying feeling of eating a meat taco without any meat in here. So I added my minced garlic to my bowl. Okay. And now just clearing out my workspace, making it clean, cleaning as we go, of course, so we don't leave a pile of mess for later. Now I want to mince my spinach. I mean, my spinach, my mint. Ah. So you can use another herb so which herb are you using camila today I'm gonna use cilantro cilantro Ooh, see that's a more authentic mexican flavor you can use parsley basil would work just fine but we need about one tablespoon so the same thing you're going to pile it up into your little pile in the center of your cutting board and then go through it a few times with your knife to chop it up a little bit and then go back and forth. And we need about one tablespoon. I love using fresh herbs when I cook, no matter what I'm making, if it's a taco recipe, if it's a pasta recipe, anything I make really, herbs are always going in there because it adds a lot of flavor and you could even smell it. Do you smell your herbs? Yeah, mine is really strong. So that's a good sign because there's a lot of essential oils in there, which contributes a lot of flavor. And that way we don't have to use so much salt because we know, like we've said in the past, too much salt in our diets is not that great for us. Do you remember why? Um, well, sodium in excess isn't good in general for your health. It can raise your blood pressure, which is not good for your heart. So if you want to keep your heart healthy, cutting down on sodium by using fresh herbs and other things like lemon, lemon has a lot of great flavor, can really bump up the flavor in your tacos without adding so much salt. So I put my minced um, mint to the side because before we even start assembling and making these tacos, I want to get all my ingredients ready so we can just go. Now we have our cucumber. So this is a mini cucumber. You can use a regular one, maybe not so much of it. I know I see Camila has half of one, so that's good. And you just want to dice this up. I'm going to cut mine in half. Or you can shred it if you want shredded. You can just slice it if you like larger pieces. I feel like this is a very make it how you like it type of dish. So you saw, I just cut it in strips along the length of it. And then I rotate it and now I'm just cutting into smaller little pieces. Okay, so we have that ready and this will be a topping for our tacos. Give it a nice fresh crunch. Putting that in my bowl. We're almost ready to work on our chickpeas. Okay. And 
then next we have some beautiful baby spinach. Now you can leave this whole if you really want to. I like to chop mine up a little bit so it's a little smaller. So every bite gets a, a bite of spinach. So I have a good amount here. Now I'm just gonna chop it up roughly. I think that's a perfect amount. I think I might have a little too much, so I might save some on the side, which is another good point. Cooking is about adjusting to your preference, right? If you see, that's a lot of spinach. I don't think I want so much spinach. I mean, it's great for you, so you should include it. I'm not saying no spinach. I'm saying, okay, I think I want a good balance of chickpea to spinach. So I'm just gonna use a little less and see how I like it. One of the greatest lessons I learned while cooking, while learning to cook, is you can always add more if you need more. You can't take away once you add it, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So for example, something like, you know, an herb, a spice, salt, pepper. I start with less, taste it a little bit, see if I like it. And then if I want more, I can always add more. But if you add too much, it's too late. You can't go fish out some salt. <laughs> chopping, chopping, chopping. Now, Camila, are you using flour or corn tortillas? I'm going to be using corn. So which one is more authentic? Corn. Exactly. Yeah. Well, while you guys can all use flour tortillas, that's fine. Corn tortillas are authentic when it comes to Mexican tacos. So we're going for somewhat authentic tacos by using corn tortillas. Okay. I'm putting that in my bowl. My chopped spinach. And we are almost ready to crack open our can of chickpeas. Okay. Alrighty, so what do you say we get started with our chickpeas? So I have a can right here. This recipe, like I said, calls for a full can and it will make extra filling. This will fill about eight tacos, eight tortillas, so if you have family and friends to feed, that's great. But hey, if you're only making this for yourself, make the filling, store it in a Tupperware in your fridge. And that way, whenever you want a quick, healthy meal, all you have to do is take out your taco filling, warm up some tortillas, and lunch will be ready in five minutes, not even. So I say you just make the whole thing what I like to call meal prep. So you'll see carefully, you want to take out this top and we have a bunch of liquid in our chickpeas. So I'm going to drain my chickpeas in my sink using a colander and rinse them a little bit. So you'll see, I'm gonna head over to the sink behind me and drain them. Give it a quick rinse. Shake off any excess water. And then this is gonna go into our bowl with our onion and garlic. So right there. Now I'm going to grab a fork and I'll tell you why a fork. I want to mash up a little bit of my chickpea so it's not rolling around in my tortilla and falling out. Because I've noticed I've made this in the past and I left the chickpeas whole, which tastes great. It tastes amazing with the garlic and the lemon that we're going to add and all the herbs. But once I picked up my taco, all my chickpeas, since they're round, rolled right out. So I think by mashing it slightly, 
with the back of a fork. You can use a potato masher, a spoon, a spatula, whatever works for you. Just mash them slightly. It doesn't have to be like a smooth paste, more like a chunky mixture. Camila's is looking great. All right, looking pretty good here. Then you'll see some of them are mashed, some of them are slightly mashed, some of them are whole. You don't have to sit here for 10 hours smashing, just enough to make it somewhat chunky. Good. Okay, next. We're going to add our herb. So I have my mint here. One and a half tablespoons of olive oil. And then what else do we add to this mixture, Camila? A lemon. Some lemon. So you need about one tablespoon of lemon juice, which I want to say is about a half a lemon. You can measure it if you're not too sure, but it's about a half. And how I like to squeeze a lemon to not get the seeds all in my food is squeeze it, holding it upright if you don't have a juicer. So you'll see I'm squeezing it. The lemon juice is falling directly into my bowl while the seeds are staying up top. Now that's a hack. That is a hack right there. And then when I see those seeds are popping out, I might put them in my garbage bowl. And I was giving her the whole day, but then when I see you ask me questions, I'm like. And lemon is another great way to add flavor without adding too much salt. But you can use lime instead if you want. You can really use whatever you have on hand for something like a taco. So if you have black beans instead of chickpeas or another kind of bean, a white bean, cannellini bean, you can use that. If you have like cilantro, which Camila has instead of parsley or mint, you can use whatever you like. What might you add next time, Camila, to make this different? I was thinking maybe like a pumpkin, like squash, Ooh. zucchini. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good way to also like vary with whatever's in season. So now that spring is here, I know peas are in season, herbs are in season, asparagus even. So you can add some of that. And then in the fall or winter when squash is in season, go for it. Now we're going to add a little bit of salt because we still need some salt, although not a lot. I'm going to add about a pinch. So a pinch, there's no technical measurement for that. I think it's about a 16th of a, tablespoon, a teaspoon, which is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. So just a pinch. And then we will taste and see if it needs a little more, we can always add. And the same thing for pepper. And mix that up one more time. Then I'm going to add my, my chopped up spinach. Oh. And look, that really bulked it up too. Ooh, this looks delicious. So this is a great way to add, like I said, plant-based protein from the chickpeas. Also a lot of fiber from the chickpeas. Some iron from our spinach, some vitamin K in there from our spinach which we said is good for our bones. 
And that right there is our quick and easy chickpea taco filling. I think what I want to do now, Camilla, what do you think? We should taste it to see if it needs a little bit more salt, more pepper, more lemon, more garlic. Let's taste. Hmm. Mm. Mine needs a pinch more salt and some more lemon. How about yours? Mine has a lot of lemon. <laughs> we have the opposite issue. Mm -hmm. Is it too much lemon or like perfect? I mean, I think it's fine, but some people might think otherwise. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's another good point. Cooking is a learning process. So I like to make mistakes when I'm in the kitchen because that means I'll make it better next time I make it. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. So next. This is where we start building our tacos, but first, what do we do, Camila? We should start heating up the tortillas. So yeah, Camila brought up a good point to me yesterday. Hey, are we gonna heat up our tortillas? And yes, absolutely. Because when we don't heat them up, they don't really taste like much, right? Mm -hmm. So you can just get a dry skillet and put it on your, bur <clears throat> your burner, sorry. On about medium high heat, and put your tortillas directly on to your skillet. Leave them there for maybe about a minute or two, right? How long do you heat yours up, Camila? Um, I don't really know. I kind of just like go with how they look and how they feel. All right, so what are we looking for? I mean, something soft, not too burnt. Um, I usually like to make sure the pan is really hot before I put it on. Ah, so I made a mistake here. <laughs> See, I'm learning from you. Okay, so wait till your skillet gets a little more warm. Yeah. So it could happen pretty quickly. All right, mine is almost there, I think. <clears throat> okay, I think mine's is ready. I think mine is too. I, I feel the heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that nice, large, square skillet you have. Thank you. So I know we're thinking, what about our cucumber and our cheese. That is our toppings. So think of cucumber as like maybe the jalapeno pepper of a regular taco or like some diced onion that you might find on a regular taco. That's going to be our crunchy topping. And then some tacos might have cheese on them. That's where our feta cheese comes. And that is it. You'll see, this is a pretty easy recipe. It comes together quickly, and that's why I also love just having extra filling in my fridge for whenever I come home from school or work and I'm busy and tired. All I have to do at that point is heat up my tortilla, get my filling, put it in my tortillas, and lunch or dinner is ready. Well, oh, mine are pretty hot, actually. That was quick, you're right. Yeah. Careful if you're using your fingers, you don't want to burn yourself. You can use something to grab it like tongs. Okay, mine are actually already- Well, I would use a fork. Or a fork. Yeah. I think mine's already. You'll see it got a little bit of color, a little toasty, but not too much. And that's, I think, what we're looking for. If you want it a little more done, go for it. I'm not stopping you. And you'll see, once you pick them up, they're a little more pliable. So they're a little more bendable, flexible. 
All right. So we have our two tortillas. Mine got hot pretty quick, so I took mine off. So did Camila. And now we just go straight in with our filling. So I'll grab a spoon, right? And just lay a little bit on in the middle. Usually this is where I get over ambitious and fill it up too much. So let's see if I could uh, restrain myself. All right, I think that looks about right. So far so good, what do we think? Oh wow, Camila, that looks good. And now, like we said, we have some chopped cucumber, right? And then going in with the best part for me, I love cheese, so our feta cheese. I'm gonna go straight with my hands. You can use a spoon if you don't wanna to get too messy. Just a sprinkle of feta cheese on each taco. And that adds a lot of what protein, calcium, great for our bones, right? Phosphorus, which is also great for our bones. And do we remember, what is it called when something has healthy bacteria in it? Is it a prebiotic or a probiotic? Probiotic. Probiotic, that's right. So I think this taco has it all. Oh, look at the avocado going on there. And yeah, so if you have a favorite topping that you wanna put on your tacos that we didn't include, maybe some pickled red onions, maybe some salsa or another cheese, another herb there, go for it. That looks delicious already. Great job. This looks like a very successful Taco Tuesday. And it's Cinco de Mayo on Thursday, so I think we're celebrating early. So when you're all ready, hold it up to the camera or bring your camera to it, it's up to you. Wow, you put it on a nice board. That looks professional. Oh my goodness. Wow, I love how you, you stacked yours up to meet in the middle. I'm gonna try that. <laughs> Inspiration right there. There we go. That looks amazing. So while we take a bite, do you think we should vote on who won? If we haven't made a poll already? So let's see, who do we think won this Taco Tuesday battle? Is it Camila with her avocado and her cilantro? Or is it me with my mint? I think it's Camila. <laughs> you know what? Let's take a bite and decide. So cheers. Take a big bite. Hmm. What do we think? So good. So good. So what do you like about it? I like like how creamy the avocado and the feta cheese like comes together. Hmm. That like helps with the chickpea flavor. I agree. So I think the cheddar, the cheddar, the feta cheese adds a nice sharpness. That contrasts with, you know, the, the mellow um, chickpea and the spinach kind of brightens the whole taco up, while the lemon and the garlic really add a lot to it as well. Makes it nice and bright. And I see Mary Mitchell has been watching. 
So what do we think, guys? A thumbs up, a thumbs down? Would we make this? Would anyone try this? Jacob said two thumbs up. All right, thumbs up from everyone. That's good. Awesome. I hope you all try it. I loved it. I think you'll love it. I think it's a good switch from your regular taco. Although we do love our regular traditional tacos, this is a good way to switch it up and add a little more fiber. Good, great. So, of course, if you make these tacos, take a picture, post it to Instagram, tag us at Family Cook NYC, tag American Dairy NE, and use the hashtag FuelUpTBC. And then also you can follow me at Family Cook NYC. Also, of course, let's see what we have next week coming our way. Next week, this is a great one. Next week, May 10th, 4, 15 p.m., same time, we are using a familiar ingredient to make dessert, but one we would never think of making dessert with, avocado. So we are making avocado chocolate mousse. That's super interesting, right? So same time, same place. Hope to see you all there. Mary Mitchell, can you sign into our um, sign-in sheet? I'm going to put it in our, our chat box. So let me put that link there, one second. And then of course, like I said last time, we have a great app. Here we go. Oh, let me put the chat, the sign in. Okay, the sign in is in the chat box, please sign in. And then of course, check out this app. It's super cool, has cool info, fun facts, and chances to win and enter contests. Um, it's called a Fuel Up to Play 60 Student Zone app. And you can get it by scanning the QR code or searching in the app store. And it's super fun. It's free. I enjoy it. I hope you will too. And I hope to see everyone here next week for our avocado chocolate mousse. Thank you, Camila. I had a blast with you. Thank I you. hope you enjoy your tacos. I'm enjoying mine. I hope everyone tries this taco recipe. And I will see you all next week. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.